condition of health. And while Chancellor, in 2006, he returned back to Lucknow University and finally retired as professor of social work on the year 2006. He was the president of ASPI and founder president of NASPI. In his 14 years long brilliant career, he has published 20 books, 200 research papers in national and international uh, journals of review, like 60 scholars for their PhD degrees and conducted more than 3,000 research projects for government and other organizations. Social fraternity shall always remember him and he is inspired by Professor Sodandasi as an excellent teacher, efficient leader, powerful motivator, and fine human being. The first memorial lecture was delivered by Professor M. J. Khan, the Department of Social Work and the Faculty of Social Science, Jamia Media, Islamia, and Delhi. The second memorial lecture was delivered by Professor R. B. S. Verma. Third lecture by Professor Balraj Chawan by Chancellor Law University. Fourth lecture by Dr. Madan Singh, Director of Adult Education. Last year, Dr. A. B. Singh had delivered. The sixth Professor Jason Memorial Lecture will be delivered by Professor Ellen Mandros, President in Sport. Now I request Professor Sanjay Roy to introduce Professor Ellen Mandros. Thank you, Professor Jason. Uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, welcome to this. Uh, Morning program. This is my uh, yes. Uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, about uh, Professor L. A. Uh, Professor Gandhinas is an alumni of KISS uh, Mumbai and obtained his PhD from KISS ISS Agra. He is a former professor of social work at the University. Well, while well, he served as chairman of the department tries and actively engaged in the decision making process of the university in corporate life, including program coordinator for the National Service Service what? Scheme. Besides, he has more than three decades of cross functional experience as an educator and practitioner. Professor Gandhi has published several articles books, journals to his schedule. He has traveled widely and participated in many international and national seminar conferences, workshops, etc. Professor Gao served as the executive director of the joint project of the government of Netherlands, India and Karnataka. In addition, he worked in Bangladesh, Tibetan refugee camps, Odisha, Andhra, Cyclone, Tsunami in South India for managing disaster. He also served as board of many government and non-government organizations such as NIPSID, Vishwajiva Kendra, Karnataka State Disaster Management Authority and many more. He services also as vice president of Association of Schools of Social Work in India, ASUI, from 2007 to 2009. Professor Gandhi Das has organized several uh, schemes uh, involved in various schemes as its uh, uh, partner uh, in, in, in community of professional social work in different levels. He has been associated with uh, IHSWA, ASSWI, Karnataka Association of Professional Social Worker, ISPSW, NAPSUI, and many more. He formed Indian Network of Professional Social Work Association uh, that we know is very uh, recognized and important in India and affiliated uh, with Indian Community of Social Workers with International Federation of Social Workers, IFSW. He was instrumental in organizing 25th Asia Pacific Conference of Social Work in India. He is one of the core team member of National Campaign Committee for advocating a National Council of Social Work Education in India. NAPSUI, uh, during this uh, ninth uh, Congress, and he has been a very important part of uh, this um, Congress. So uh, I'll request uh, Professor Gandhidas to start his uh, lecture 
on Shundar, Professor Surinder Singh Memorial Lecture. Thank you, sir. Sir, over to you. Uh, good morning to all. And uh, it's very nice. I have given the opportunity to make my presentation on behalf of Professor Surinder Singh. I always love the Lucknow University and the team. And I met several of them. And today I could see Professor Rajkumar Singh is there in the uh, list. Uh, I saw his face, but uh, I, I, yes, he is uh, now promoted. Uh, you know, they have a long legacy. Uh, you know, JK Institute, I visited uh, three, four times there. And um, they have a long history, plus they have a, some small culture for the department themselves. And if you look at, they are the major contributors for social work educators in the Northern India. Some have gone abroad, Bridge Mohan, um, uh, all those people. And uh, we had the very good writers, uh, um, uh, S.P. Srivatsu, uh, our Surender Singh Saab, and, uh, uh, Rajkumar Singh also is a good writer and uh, uh, and lots of publications uh, they bring out, including they had a, for long uh, the, a journal. So if you look at in northern India, uh, Lucknow has contributed immensely for the social work education, educators and its growth. One of the big institute, I think uh, social work department runs more than 20, 25 courses, I think, along with uh, social work. They have a large number of courses there and uh, very well respected in the university. They always held a number of posts, including Rajkumar Singh is a pro vice chancellor, if I'm correct now. And uh, I was earlier, sir. Yes, yes. And um, they, they are very good uh, host. Whenever I went, they will spend quality time with us. And a wonderful time with the SP Sirvatsa. And I visited the Surinder Singh when he was staying in the after retirement in the cotton colony. Correct, sir? Cotton colony. Cotton, mill. Colony. cotton mill colony. colony. Yes. yes. And I went and met him, interacted with him, and uh, uh, he always mentioned one of the mistakes he made was to become a vice chancellor. He said it ruined a lot of his uh, other opportunities. Therefore, that's my memory with uh, Surinder Singh and uh, Lucknow University. And I'm personally grateful to Napsi for one thing. Uh, they never told me on what topic I should speak, except the main theme is there. And uh, even today, I don't think they know what I'm going to speak. That is the freedom I got from uh, Sanjay Bhatt and uh, others. To be fitting to the, my earlier generation and to Lucknow, a center of culture, a culture center there. Yeah, I selected a very unusual topic and overview of philosophy as a tool in social work practice. I ventured this with a lot of difficulty because I know that I'm not a very good in Hindi or Sanskrit uh, to understand the philosophical roots, but still I ventured for some reasons. And because in social work, we have the first paper always philosophy of social work. What do we teach there is just uh, Western philosophy of uh, West, not even Western philosophy. We we'll talk about charities, charity organization, society, the Christianity, and things of that sort. Then, when you come to India, we talk about dharma, karma, and then we switch over to some of the uh, aspects of dharma, and then we complete that. Then I felt that is not the way that we need to. Uh, teach this subject or understand the subject. Therefore, during lockdown period, I had an opportunity to look at this philosophical aspect. 
Therefore, what I'm going to do is not talk in detail about philosophy, but what philosophy has contributed uh, to the social work knowledge, and then how we need to look at philosophy. The Ninth Social Work Congress selected the theme, National Building Vision 2030, Social Work Profession. In other words, our small professional input for national building. While doing this exercise, we have some questions in our mind. What kind of nation we want? What will be this nation for me when I reach 2030? Who else is participating along with us in nation building? Lastly, what kind of social work education to practice and needed to reach this goal? These are some of the questions I thought I, for myself. I want to assure you that I will not make any attempt to answer all these questions. All these questions can be framed this way. What is my idea or thought of nation building and social work? So I change my premises from that question. What is my idea of nation building and social work? The next question is, where do I get this idea? Or thought, I mean, we can interchange. Where do I get this idea? Are such ideas or thoughts are from others or my own? Are we looking for some collective ideas? If so, who are then who are subscribers? Who else will subscribe? All ideas, if properly conceptualized, definite to provide a vision. Endless questions without small actions are meaningless. Therefore, let us talk about these ideas or thought, which may enable us to change the current status and reach reach the vision 2030. That takes us to look at philosophy as a tool to examine and understand the vision for social work and nation building. Today, as soon as one hears the word philosophy, our immediate reaction is stop it, enough. Enough, we listen to this. These are normally used to be talked by people, our world people, who have unpracticable wisdoms. The wisdom is there, but we can't put that practice, put into practice. Therefore, the world, it is philosophy belongs to older generation, not for anybody else. This is the kind of a general outlook, not only in India, everywhere. But philosophy, if you want to understand, is all our continuous interaction between life, universe, human, and God. Since life is existing in every living organism, it's thought, ideas continuously make efforts to establish and maintain and change relationship between these aspects. Life is real. Our thoughts and ideas are dynamic. There are constant struggle and challenges to maintain seemingly a balance between these aspects. We balance it through our thoughts and ideas. Therefore, if you want to know what is life or what is philosophy, it's nothing very great about it. But it is 
the way life our universe our human we as a human and there is a god if you believe the interaction between this four what creates life and thought and this is created through our own thoughts and ideas not by anybody else we thought about this interactions constant interactions and developed such a basic understanding of this relationships and that is what philosophy captures all our decisions and actions are product of our thoughts and ideas if we don't understand this thought process it is not going to help us either to build us or a nation as long as we are not challenged for what we are then we maintain status progress is faster when we are challenged and work to address the challenge the other day i was just listening to a very good entrepreneur a it boy he got a job coming from a very humble family from rural background he got a job and uh, within one month of that the boss called him and said please you are not required here uh, and uh, he begged and he cried boss said no we don't have space for all such things he quit the job he had a very small amount walked to a coffee shop with a lot of emotions he was thinking then he came out with the decision i will not work with any boss i'll be the boss in two years time he developed the app on money payment just like phone pay very popular app and today is there what i am only saying is when we are challenged it changes the status of the current situation and this is what exactly philosophy does in our life it challenges number of status accepted wisdoms accepted values throughout the ages and then it changes that is the major understanding of philosophy as social workers we are constantly influence people we don't say that we influence but that's what we do we work to change the current status through knowledge education as an intervention process we say our motto is helping people to help themselves very good we would look squarely to understand that themselves have you ever spent few minutes who is that themselves who are they and understand whether they need any help how do they look at our help all our actions leads to some change in the person that we work with it is said an examined life is not worth living and unevaluated experience is not worth collecting one of the tools therefore to examine the social work education and philosophy is to know the human being because philosophy is all about that this talk will swiftly take you to some paradigm shifts in the philosophy and it is this impact on people's life throughout ages of history therefore i will not discuss any detail except focus on some core aspects philosophy is normally divided into two categories before socrates after socrates the greek philosophers of that time was considered as original thinkers since they neither borrowed any books or any previous work read nothing in short their philosophy was based on observations perceptions and questions on their observation friends don't we do this in our day to day case work group work are we conscious but three greek philosophers were produced by just using this unbiased 
uninfluenced thoughts and process. The Greek trio, popularly known as Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, contributions are immense even today. We all know Socrates never wrote anything. He asked people to raise original questions and think about them. The focus was on what is life? What is government? What is bravery? These are the questions he asked everybody. He emphasized, think on your own and find answers. Plato helped us to define our thoughts and ideas as concept. Since thoughts are important to, to influence the world, it is good to define our thoughts as concepts, which is the knowledge. Aristotle contributed to the classification and codification of our conceptual knowledge through logical thinking. He said, everything must have a cause. If there is an effect, that must be a cause. Logic is the codified dialectics. How much we look at this work in our research even today? In analysis of the human problems, in the logical details, either through our participatory approach or other approach, as Socrates said, I will also tell as social workers, please think on your own on this. When philosophers point out the shift in the history philosophy came with the arrival of Jesus Christ. For long, there was nothing happened. His message of love for one another, care for the sick and inform, liberate the oppressed, had tremendous influence in the Middle East and Europe after his death. The effect is Jewish religious dogma shifted from obedience and observations of Jewish laws given by Moses to showing love, concern for the fellow human being. His classical statement, love thy neighbor as thyself become a powerful theme even today. Historians point out, very important, rulers keep track of all these preachers. That's how Socrates was poisoned. By whom? By rulers. Jesus Christ was crucified. By whom? By rulers. Even today, I feel this exists for anyone who speaks against the existing dogmas and existing belief system. And the only thing is we are not crucified poison, but there are a number of methods evolved. Therefore, be very clear, the state, if I use the word, or the governance always dislike any philosophy. Be very clear about this. But, but I can give a lot of histories, but I don't want to. In 16th century, Western philosophers dealing religion from philosophy. The focus was on human life, that power of reasoning, scientific evidence was used in reasoning. Freedom of human being is a central theme. Hegel, Immanuel Kant, further input, conceptual knowledge into a dialectic process, a process improving knowledge by reasonable, innovative questions. Even today, I am supposed that we all use this. And he developed thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. I think we use very much in our, all our discourses, these words, if you remember. There is a thesis, we question that thesis, it becomes antithesis. Since there is a thesis existed, 
There is antithesis, which pro provided a new knowledge. We synthesize both thesis and antithesis and produce a new, new knowledge. This is how idea get progressed into philosophies and other things. Do we remember these steps in a conscious way? What kind of social work education synthesize antithesis, thesis, antithesis, and synthesis? Number of writers like Professor Rajkumar Singh should think and little more detailed presentation in his days now. Karl Marx's dialectic materialism, social contract theory of Locke Roosevelt influenced people in the 16th and 17th century. The social contract theory simply stated, people live together in a society in accordance with an agreement establishes an agreement that establishes moral and political rules of behavior. It produced a new mantra for rulers and people. The voice of the people was conceptualized as liberty, fraternity, equality. This has become the cornerstone for people who govern and the govern. This is a contribution of philosophers. We changed both Western civilization and the society. And that is where I want us to look at philosophy in a much more careful, dedicated manner. So far, the philosophy interpreted the world, but with the arrival of new thinking, and concepts, philosophy focus shifted from interpreting the world, how to change the world. And that is where we also as social workers focus quite a lot on how to change people, how to change world for new building nation 2030. <coughs> we need to depend on some kind of philosophical aspect. The philosophers influence the society to think differently from knowing the world and changing the world. Frederick Nietzsche work on existentialism greatly influenced the Western world. He proposed a theory, rational consciousness. Persons are free and responsible for their own life. Even today, this is one of the central theme that we love. The popular notion was, I think, therefore, I can think rationally. And reason, my thinking, all my thinking should lead to reason. The core human essence is the power of reason. Work. We have this as I I think some of them should be. Uh, plus, we looked at people using science and psychology, living science and psychology, like. Sigmund Freud, veteran Russell, Tolstoy, Michael Foucault, Jackie Locaine, they changed the basic purpose of the philosophy. The major contributions were from German and French philosophers, whose contributions are very, very great. Today, when we talk about human rights, social justice, women's rights, citizens' rights, all such concepts evolved when they combined philosophy, science, and psychology. That new dimension in our life came with the arrival of Simon, Sigmund Freud and others. It changed the way we look at people, the way we look at our people's life. It is important to note two important changes occurred from the Western philosophy. One, 
French Revolution, the second Russian Revolution. We forget it, how philosophy has changed the very society. These two revolutions have changed every basic social structure of the society and the government. It goes without saying, people's anger on any establishment completely alters the social, economic, and political discourses. And that is the power of philosophy. Secondly, the focus on the rights of the common citizen overrides all other priorities. The opportunity for, for social work had grown. Number of values and principles of social work stemmed from these philosophical discourses. Now, quickly, let me turn to Indian philosophy. Indian philosophy is somehow rooted in religion. This is the first thing. Even today, it is quite a lot rooted in religion. Indian philosophy classified into two schools, Astika, Astika, East, Atheist. The immediate thing is those who believe in God, those who don't believe in God. This is not. Some of the philosophers lately classify this Astika as those who accepted scripture as an authority and Nastikas, those who did not accept scriptures, Vedas, as an authority. That's all the difference. Nothing more. But we said belief in God, not belief in God. That is not true. That is what the uh, thinkers now contribute. The simplest way we understand our Indian contribution, yeah, I borrow it from some philosopher. One school of thought in Indian philosophy and religion. One school is, there is only one world, nothing more. There is no life beyond, there is nothing before. And we never heard about this. They have only believed in there is existence of the world. Karuakas. Chattopadhyaya, Devi Prasad Chattopadhyaya, one materialism of Indian philosophy talks about them. There are references to them in the Mahabharata, or Karuakas. Karuakas believed only in four elements, not five. Universal element, not five, four. They believed in only four. And uh, they never believed in God. There are no literature about them. There was no writing about them. Therefore, they are not remembered. They are just kept in the books. But they are the one of the ancient thinkers within India who never believed in God. They believed what just the world is the reality. Then we came come across the second kind of classic, uh, whether I mean uh, religious discourses. There is life, life which is real, which is Atma. The world is not real, it's a Maya. So what is real, eternal Atma, the purpose of Atma to reach the Parma. So the rest is Maya. And that is Advaita. Life is there and the world is there. They don't say whether God is there. That is Samanas. That is James. That is Samanas. They say there is life. The world is not there. And they don't say whether there is a God or not in clear terms. Uh, so there is Jainism. World is there, life is there, but no God. Buddhism. Buddhism. I am I there, world is there, God is there. Saiva Siddhanta. Then the last one are Siddhas. We heard about them. 
God is in you. Don't seek God outside you. All teaching centers around justice, honesty, truth that leads to dharma. So if you look at all these things, the Indian philosophy is closely related to religion. Therefore, Max Muller says very clearly, Indian philosophy is not for knowledge, but for the highest purpose of human life and attainment of moksha. That is the purpose in all, all our philosophy. Two interesting observations arising out of Indian philosophy. In India, we have answers to all questions of life. Why I am like this? We can explain. Why I am not like this? We can explain. Why my father is like this? We can explain. Whether my marriage will take place? Yes, we can tell. Whether why I got into accident? We can explain. So we have answers to all questions based on certain scriptures, practices. Our life is already determined. The space for freedom is less. The belief system is one of the challenges in social work practice. Since the concept of change is not what people consider, but what God realizes himself or herself in the person. Therefore, to realize the purpose, we reach gurus and mentors to guide our inner soul and our destiny in this material world. However, thinkers like Swami Vivekananda, Valalar, Arbindu, Osho, Dayanan Saraswati, Kule, they try to change all these things in a different way. However, even today, this was understood from the larger canvas of religion, not independent. Friends, there is one important thing we miss in Indian philosophy. That is about small religions. You know, during Shankara's period, there are more than 10,000 small, small religions. Very small. Whenever we ask a commoner in the villages, how many gods are there? Mukoti, that means three crores, 30,000 people, they say. Is it true? Yes, it is true. Was it India? Yes, it was India. Because we philosophy concentrated only on major discourses of the religion but it neglected the small religion. And all small religion, when you go to villages, is rooted in nature and relationship with man, human, land, nature, and that's all. Their gods are natural gods. Therefore, if you find that rural people or the very remote people, the five elements are their gods in one form or other. The macro religion somehow took all that into the fold. So we have Bhuma Devi, we have uh, Saraswati, but all those things are all belong to the rights of the small religion. If you look at Balaji today, which is very famous, rich, he was worshipped by the tribal people. Subsequently, it has become a big god. So how small gods and religions are and nature where they love. Only the literary people are brought in, bringing out this particular knowledge to us. It is not philosophers. It is a, every vernacular language I know, small story writers, poets, have brought their knowledge of these small religions. That's why, sir, we all believe in three types of three-tier God system. One for my family, we call it family God. One for my community, Kula Devaru, we say for my groups, a God. Then one for general. 
you see this how this synthesis taken place between thesis antithesis and synthesis this is one of the great example of small religion becoming part of the big religion in the discourses many things have happened it is very important to understand <clears throat> the small religion in social work practice because that is what people are made up of let me look at one person i did not i did not input that that is gandhi gandhi philosophy is slightly different he did not propose any philosophy on his own but both indian and western scholars widely written on gandhian philosophy based on his writings and action because his philosophy touched every aspects of our human life social caste system agriculture economy government if you remember shoemaker's book small is beautiful an uh, economics book came out of the gandhian philosophy he lived in the ashram near madurai for more than one year to understand the gandhian philosophy and when he published shoemaker small it is beautiful the western corporates were threatened by that concept itself it is he acknowledged a coming from gandhian thoughts and influences however he kept gandhian teaching in high pedestal and fact and his practice as quotations for occasions but even today gandhi gandhian thoughts are important tool in all our public actions and discourses we we may hate gandhi we can disown gandhi but we can't have our public actions public discourses without any reference somewhere making to god that is his power of gandhian thought on indian mind he is the one who cut across even to the communist man therefore the sustainability of gandhian philosophy is very correct therefore to summarize what is indian philosophy talks about it talks about only five things it has a tremendous spiritual orientation the self atma soul spirit is the soul power human has that power rational thinking will lead to realization it also talks about how soul exists the ultimate goal of soul is to oneness with the supreme power it is god who makes us to act and we we act according to that as a human we are only instruments friends do we look at do we realize that bulk of the people with whom we work focus come from this system of thinking if you are at least conscious about this one of the indian school of philosophy will be handy any schools you take it but we can use it we in india in normal life exhibit indian philosophy but in macro interpersonal relationship we lean towards western philosophy majority of us are not able to synthesize this in our personal life therefore we are torn between personal life indian philosophy public life western philosophy but how we need to synthesize this in our system we have not done yet. and if we look at our philosophy in that way it will be good from that let me come to a little more concluding point the modernization era erased erased all these philosophies modernization era created a new global order global commerce global economy and corporate culture through corporate gurus and business models 
it created a hope and prosperity for all that's all modernization but the story is different questions were raised whether modernization fulfilled these goals has the investment in weapons created peace in the world has our own investment in all other priorities did it bring prosperity to people is europe asian countries western culture rippled with new identity crisis of the marginalized local communities local identities you look at the stories of east europe i think you will understand even now all our political parties and our states are bubbling with the i want separate state for this i want separate state for this for me separate state for you no you are not not this bubbling with this kind of crisis because the human being question single ideology and universal common core we find throughout the history whenever a single ideology comes it gets destroyed including communism including religion how many divisions in indian religions how many religion christianity how many sub christianity is there in everything there is a divisions why people think differently and there are people to follow differently therefore you find the freedom for thinking is a fundamental human right or human nature first of all it's not even right it's our nature it cannot be controlled the society moved from meta narrative or grand narrative narrative today today to micro narrative this is what the post modern theory talks about post modernization becomes the voice of the small ethnic groups social identity has become voice of the day short story writers novelist in all languages and from all walks of life captured this particular aspect articulated the silent sufferings of the people the rise of the social media to articulate the same has become order of the day social media also makes us addicts today technology combined with psychology creating a new society by mistake from buying agar agarbatti using vedic chants to health care system using our modern gadgets for our information and knowledge has diminished our power of reasoning and basic instinct the human as the power to discern and discuss we have mortgaged this to gadgets how uh, the social work practice a direct practice with people we need to understand communities and people not only from the social psychological angle but from philosophical angle which influences their basic life this philosophy is embedded in all invisible forms that is most important invisible form in our daily relationship there is a continuous struggle and confrontation in our daily life philosophy enables us to understand this dimension of what is known to me what is not known to me then the i and they mind and not mind this subtle feeling operates in our subconscious level as well as our conscious this is not a new window to look through the gentle breeze from the actions of philosophers and thinkers who have shown how to be human being in all through ages and human history and civilization let us examine as 
from the wisdom of people as we work to resurrect the world new vision since i talked about the micro narrative from modern era post modern literature i borrow a simple poem written by a sri lankan poet but you know all poems and saying will be very good only when it told in that own language it loses its power but however let me make that sentence what is today life how philosophy is combined in our day to day living the first statement of this poem no one is a leader to anyone you are the leader for yourself if you have a bravery and honesty you are a god to yourself none of us knows everything now no human being knows everything if anyone knows everything he is not human thank you for the opportunity thank you for your listening thank you uh, so much uh, professor gandhi sir wonderfully you have narrated lot of things uh, especially philosophical background the reality what should be professional social worker where we are so thank you for giving us uh, the very insight of philosophical understanding what should be in, in today's concept today's perspective thank you so much sir uh, i'll request uh, uh, our nepsu president my honorable dear sir uh, professor divedi sir to just have some uh, remarks on on these uh, beautiful uh, narratives of this uh, discussion thank you please good morning to you and all everybody first i pay tribute to the great educators and very good administrator academic leaders especially from the field of social work professor suresh singh i pay tribute to him today i enjoyed the lecture of the great achar especially in the field of social work after long time do being a member of the national council of campaign committee i interacted i heard you but very in small section of the deliberations today what i feel that i am sitting in a classroom where a professors indian philosophy professor is delivering the lecture you prove in your deliberation that why social work education need the compulsory paper that is the philosophy of social work without changing the mindset of the people without changing the mindset of the common masses development cannot take place development cannot take place here i would like to refer one statement the one of the well known physicist wrote a letter eisenberg wrote a letter to his contemporary physicist einstein what is said in that letter he writes in that letter that west has developed a ship having all comfort in it but one thing is missing that is compass and further he just says that compass is in hand of two leaders of india gurudev ravindra tagore and mahatma gandhi you referred in your deliberations that how we develop the different kind of ideas even in the western philosophy you refer the immanuel kant you also refer the philosophy political philosopher burton russell and rightly you pointed out the french revolution from which we took the very amrit tatva like the justice liberty freedom fraternity and the entire scenery of the world is changed and people move further to attain the democratic nature of the country and state sir your special focus on the indian philosophy from the charvak theist and atheist what is the conclusion you brought in the notice of the social or fraternity that vedanta vedanti says brahma satyam jagat mithya 
बट वी हैव द लीडर्स ऑफ द नब्य वेदांति लाइक महात्मा जी रविन्द्रनाथ टैगोर अरविंदो यू रिफर द नेम ऑफ अरविंदो स्वामी विवेकानंद वाई इज नब्य वेदांति ही एक्सेप्टेड द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ गॉड गॉड इज ट्रूथ बट ही सेट ब्रह्म सत्यम जगत सत्यम च इफ द गॉड इज ट्रूथ हिज क्रिएशन कैन नॉट बी फॉल्स इफ वी फील द फॉल्स वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट इन टू ट्रूथ दैट इज द वर्क एंड इन प्रजेंट श्रीरियो uh definitely the humanity we have to work not only for the material development infrastructure development if it's in 2030 without considering the human nature without considering the philosophy of human being we cannot move forward sir i salute सर माइक आपका म्यूट हो गया है थैंक यू सो मच सर वी आर कंक्लूडिंग दिस सेशन प्रोफेसर सुरेंद्र सिंह मेमोरियल लेक्चर थैंक यू प्रोफेसर गांधी सर एंड ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट ओवर हियर टुडे इन द मॉर्निंग थैंक यू सो मच आई विल रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल प्लीज स्टे विद आर we are going to start a uh, next plenary session to on vision for nation building and governance thank you so much thank you rajkumar ji thank, thank you, you thank, thank you, you napsi thank you wonderful lecture